Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You, and in our last video about the 203 spawns of the Grand Underground, a lot of people were asking very specific questions about starters. So you know what? I've decided to make a whole entire video about the starters, so let's get on into it. This is how to get all 14 starters in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. The first starter that we're gonna be getting is Pikachu. What you wanna do is go from Hearthorn City and head to the south exit over here. Through this little tunnel here and pop out on Route 212. Continue going down towards this mansion that you're gonna see on the right. We'll be passing a couple, as you can see over here, an old couple. We're gonna talk about them in another video. Very big, important details there. Going more north, we enter this giant mansion looking building. Keep going to the back. And then you'll run into a big patch of grass. This grass is very, very special because you have a chance of grabbing a Pikachu here at a 10% rate. Now, there's Pichus here that are more common. So if you just wanted to grab a Pichu and evolve it into Pikachu, that works pretty well. And there we go. There is Pikachu. Level 18, looking spicy. I'm just going to throw a Pokeball at it. I should have the Pikachu and got it. The next starter that you want to get is going to be located in Hearthome City. So head back over there, exactly the same area where we went to journey for the Pikachu. This is where you're going to be getting Eevee. Please note that you must have completed the regional decks in order to get Eevee. So when you go inside, you'll be talking to someone named Bebe. She'll explain stuff about her boxes and then she'll say, do you want a Pokemon called Eevee? And just like that, you grab your Eevee, you obtain it and it's there. And then you can evolve Eevee into all its Eeveelutions. When I discovered the fire starters in the game, I was pretty much in the post game island and I went underground into the fire area. It's a lot of fiery areas, volcanic areas. And I wasn't really expecting starters to show up. I was just exploring casually when I first bumped into it. But yeah, as you can see here, I'm going through the underground, a lot of Pokemon chasing me. If you wanna know what Pokemon are down here, make sure to check out the 203 guide. But yeah, here is Chimchar that shows up. I was like, wait, Chimchar? And by the way, for those of you who don't know, this Chimchar has the ability or the access to having Thunder Punch because you can get egg move starters down here. So Thunder Punch Chimchar, fantastic Pokemon to get, catch it and breed it down to your others and share them online, stuff like that. I go back in again in this other area. I see a Chimchar, ignore it because I already caught it. Walking down, I decided to, oh, I missed an area. Turn around and then I see Charmander. Oh my God, the Gen 1 Pokemon over here. By the way, this Charmander also has egg moves. And I go ahead and capture this in an Ultra Ball. So just like that, I got Charmander. And as you can see, we're doing nothing but just staying within the fire biomes. And just like that, in one area, I already got two starters. I go back into another room and then I see Cyndaquil. Here is Cyndaquil, the Gen 2 fire starter. You start to really notice the fire starters in the end game a lot because you have your national decks open. Fire starters are just in their natural fire habitats. The final starter that I needed to get was Torchic, which is the Gen 3 starter. So I go into another fire room or the volcanic cave, and there you go. Right there in front of you is a Torchic, just like that. By the way, if you want to check one room only, you can. You just have to go in and out, in and out, in and out. I go over all of this in my 203 Grand Underground video. So then I throw a quick ball, and just like that, I have secured every single fire starter in the lava, volcanic runes, all these fire places, basically. That's all you have to do. The next starters that I had to hunt down were the water starters. And as you can see here, I entered Fountain Spring Cave. And if you look at the top left of that map, you can see it's a water biome. It's literally just blue. This isn't hard to find. You'll see this all over your Grand Underground map. And in these post game, of course, and after your national decks, mostly your national decks, which is post game, you can see the starters. As you can see here, we spotted a Piplup as we walked in here. I threw the Ultra Ball. Got it. Wasn't too hard to show up. Uh, you're going to notice it's going to be very different for the starters that you encounter along the room. Sometimes you have to go in and out of the room 20 times. Sometimes you'll be that very lucky person and maybe get two starters in a room. This is a Mudkip we got here. Mudkip also showed up. I don't remember exactly how many times I had to refresh for Mudkip, but it's very cool 
to see Mudkip in this room. Now, Mudkip appears in both the water room and the water slash grass room. So keep that in mind as that's a really solid place to also hunt down the grass starters, but we'll get into that later. Now you can see a Squirtle has also appeared in the same exact dual room of water and grass. It's a pretty sweet spot because it's one room and you can get eight starters. It's, it's nice. So there's a Squirtle. We got the Squirtle as well. And now the last one I need to get is my favorite Pokemon known as Totodile. I, there's just something about Totodile that looks so funny. I don't know. I relate to Totodile. He's a very quirky starter Pokemon. And it's literally a crocodile. Totodile. Crocodile, right? That makes sense. We encountered Totodile here. So I wonder if they could be shinies. The chance is probably just a, a normal, a normal overworld encounter. Nothing too crazy here. I throw a dusk ball. I get my Totodile in the dusk ball. And bada bing, bada boom. Totodile is caught and just like that, secured all four water starters. This was pretty awesome. Now, the next step after this is to get your grass starters. All you have to do is either be in a grass biome or the exact same cave as you saw the Totodile, the Mudkip, and the Squirtle. So here's Bulbasaur in the mixed cave. Bulbasaur is pretty easy to find, not too hard. In fact, I think Bulbasaur is the most common grass one you see, in my opinion. It's not data, but it is the most common one I see. You guys can let me know down in the comments down below which ones you see more than anything. And there we go, cut Bulbasaur in an Ultra Ball. Next Pokemon I'm going to be finding is... Okay, I respawned in the room. Where is it? There it is, Chikorita. We bump into a Chikorita over here. Now, I remember this encounter did not go so well at all. Uh, there's a reason why it didn't go so well is because this Chikorita accidentally was murdered by my Empoleon. So I did not catch this Chikorita for this video. It absolutely killed it. I, I did not mean to. I, I didn't know I was going to do that much damage, but I forgot it's a stab move on a Napoleon, so that's not good. The third starter, when I refreshed and came out the room, is the Trico. This Pokemon is pretty cool. You know, I'm getting flashbacks of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire every time I look at Trico. I miss the fact that it could become a dragon type when you do the Mega Evolution, but it is what it is. I throw a Dusk Ball, catch it, should get in the ball, and then I get it. Yep, yep, come on. There it is. Got it in the ball. Trico was caught. So, I got all three grass starters, and then there was just one more, but uh, I didn't have the footage for it. I can't find footage of Turtwig anywhere, so I'm gonna go into this cave now, and hopefully we can get it. And I got two Turtwigs in the same video, and Chikorita. Oh, what a lucky spawn. Okay, there's Turtwig, and Chikorita, and Gabites, and oh my gosh, no way. Okay, let's go grab this Turtwig right over here. And that, that's it. I keep going in and out of the room. And I finally got Turtwig to spawn. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is pretty much all the things you have to do to get the starters. So to summarize, 13 out of the 14 starters are locked behind the national decks. You get Pikachu, and that's pretty much it. The rest of them, you have to get after national decks. Eevee, you get from Bebe, and then you go to the Grand Underground, grab all your starters. You get the fire starters in the volcanic areas. You get the water starters in literally the water biome. You get the grass starters in the actual grassy biome. And if you want to get a combination of the water and grass starters, you just have to go in the merged biome, which is grass and water. And you can literally hunt eight of the starters there, which is the grass and water ones. If you want a more detailed understanding of all the Pokemon that spawn in the Grand Underground, don't forget to check out our Grand Underground Ultimate video, which has 203 spawns and everything. My name is Philly Beats. You hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. I'm out.